we can, we can take a small tour. <laughs> yeah, sure. So a, this is this is the door I wasn't allowed to open for uh, forty eight hours. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's basically just a nice hotel room. The, the lens might fuck up because it's super hot outside compared okay. to the inside. Uh, Ina and a part of the F one circuit. Sun sets pretty early here, or already around seven. Well, I was a bit disappointed that the fight wasn't <laughs> going to take place in the actual cage at the beach. Exactly like you, I felt like it was a page or a scene taken right out of um, Ends of the Dragon with, uh, with Bruce right. Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was like my, that was like my association when I heard it. I, I guess I expected more, uh, a more tropical climate, not a desert uh -huh. climate. Because of, you know, again, because I think my reference was the Bruce Lee movie where it's a, it's a more... Uh, luscious like island with with a lot of trees and green where like we're basically in the middle of of a desert here right. on a man-made island hey everyone so in my good fortune i had a chance to bump into a now ufc fighter nicholas dolby while i was training at sbg ireland what's interesting about nicholas dolby is that first of all he's a really really cool person and we had a chance to hang out and talk about many things you know he's He's an awesome individual because not only uh, he has a lot of great fighting experience, but also he has a brilliant mindset. He has he's kind of the the martial artist in the realm of fighters because he does have a six year karate background in his youth days before he started MMA, uh, and also his um, not only his journey is fascinating, but also uh, he has significant achievements. Uh, a while ago he was the champion of cage warriors and then he got a ufc contract but the interesting part that happened to him which he's very open to talk about and one more reason i respect nicholas he he became depressed and that depression like a clinical like real depression not like a made-up thing uh it started to obviously uh, influence his performance and uh, he lost a few fights as he got the fights in the UFC and he got he dropped out and then he went on a journey to recover and went to therapy and eventually built himself back up and decided to go on a quest to get back into UFC. What the interesting part is, I was told by many professional fighters when I was hanging out with them, especially in Ireland, that it's, a, it's an extremely rare thing to get taken back to UFC. It's easy to get to be cut but it's very difficult to come back. But nevertheless, after he beat his depression, after he uh, learned how to deal with it, he decided to go on a quest and recover in his fighting career. And the part, the moment when we met, uh, Nicholas, he was training for in an interim champion uh, fight for Cage Warriors because, you know, he left it vacant, another guy took it, and, and they were both un, un, undefeated. Uh, Nicholas beforehand, he was never defeated until he started losing in the UFC when he uh, became depressed. And so these two guys, undefeated guys, they had to fight to show who's the real champ. And if you watch that fight, it became an epic legendary fight because it was the bloodiest fight probably ever. I'm putting up a picture right now. You can see it just blood was, there was so much blood out there that the fight got stopped. It was like a historic moment. Uh, nobody knew of any other case when that happened. There was too much blood. They were slipping all over the place and the referee just called the fight and said, you know, no, no contest. Uh, the good part was that Nicholas was actually having the upper hand and, uh, you know, the fight got out and uh, UFC eventually contacted him because uh, UFC was coming to Denmark and Nicholas Dolby is from, from Denmark. And uh, they contacted him to renew the contract and uh, he became part of UFC again. That's when we met again when he was preparing for his first comeback fight, which was a fight with Alex Oliveira, the cowboy, which is a tough fight, a tough comeback fight because Alex, you know, Oliveira, he's like such an experienced fighter and Nicholas is still nevertheless amazing and he won against Oliveira and now Nicholas is at the famous UFC Fight Island uh, he's preparing for his fight which is going to be happening this Sunday I'm super excited for it and was happy that he found a moment to talk to me in between his training at Fight Island to talk about a bit of his story what what's new about training uh, what what training was like during COVID 
and what, what it's like to be in Fight Island and what actually how actually Fight Island is and a few other really cool thoughts about the game of fighting in general. So really nice talk. If you have some time to listen to it, I highly recommend it. And also down below, you'll find a link to listen to the audio podcast version if you don't want to look at our beautiful faces. So enjoy and have a good one. A quick recap of your journey, which I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm so happy about it all. <laughs> uh, okay. So we've, we actually, regarding our connection, we already have two videos beforehand. One was before you had your yeah. title, your uh, interim title, uh, title fight at Cage Warriors, yeah. which was an epic fight. I'll never forget that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, afterwards we met before your fight with Alex Oliveira, uh, yeah. which was great to also see how you felt getting back into UFC and having this well-known and uh, experienced opponent. Uh, you won, which was amazing. I watched that fight, I was rooting intensively, as I said to you, which is great. I mean, it was a great fight. So obviously Thank congratulations you. about that, but that's obvious. And now we are, you're in Fight Island, the, 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 yeah. the island, which seems like it's from a movie or at least, you know, the way they present it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, and th it's been a crazy journey as well. Like that that period, there was COVID, and there was you were supposed to have a fight. The fight yeah didn't happen because of COVID. Then then your opponent dropped out here, almost like last yeah. moment. And then you got a new replacement. It's just so much happened. So I guess, but yeah. but just like something I want to ask you before we get to the present moment, uh, like a quick recap of your fight with Cowboy uh, Alex. Uh, how was that like? I, I you know I don't want to make this whole talk about that, but just like what what I don't know. Stuck with you? Well, it was you know I, I was I've never felt so focused as I, as I did that week and and when walking up for that fight and and while fighting, it, it was it was very um, I guess reassuring in a way because when I felt that focus, I knew I, w I was going to perform the best I could. Mm. Um, so I, I felt, yeah, it's, it's always difficult to say you're feeling comfortable, but I, I felt I belonged in the cage and I felt yeah. I, I did good. Uh, it's always a bit uncomfortable, I guess, fighting. I <laughs> you always try that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I felt good in there uh, and I felt like I belonged. To me, when I walked out, like, I, I guess I've never fought. Well, it was it was the first time ever a Danish fighter walked out for a UFC event in Denmark. Nice, so I don't yeah. know what level of support they would have showed anyway, but I, I felt maybe that's just me overthinking, but it felt like, you know, a great deal of them had, had followed my journey and yeah. and that made them even more supportive. Um, uh, definitely everybody backstage, they, they were hyped about the... the atmosphere in the arena when i walked out they said definitely i got the biggest <laughs> applause uh yeah. and support from the crowd so that was that was very incredible yeah. but yeah in, in the fight I, I felt good um i did have a couple of moments though which is something i learned a lot from where i was kind of just for split seconds um second guessing myself i guess in my head i didn't fully yet understand or i didn't fully yet believe understand or or, or kind of get that that i'm at the same level so i was instead of just going with the flow i was kind of second guessing myself just for a split second mm -hmm. in a couple of moments um yeah. and i learned a lot from that because i am at that level and i can compete Absolutely. at that level and I'm, I'm incredibly skilled and and it's always better if i just go with the flow don't don't hesitate yeah um yeah. so uh, so that was that was something i appreciate taking from that fight um would have loved to, to finish it uh before the clock ran out of course and, and or maybe not leave it uh like as close as it, as it as it was but uh I'm, i was happy to get away with the win and and felt felt good doing it like it was a great experience and I learned something from it, so I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah.
Very cool. Yeah, I was so hyped as well, and 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 into the fight, and uh, I, because we spoke about it, and you made a very good point. Well, first of all, it was like your first comeback fight, and you already get an opponent, which is you know that yeah. that well known and and that experienced has so many fights, and so so for me there was that tension as well, like cool, okay, this is going to be big, and and I remember very vivid, yeah. very clearly how you said that that's great at the same time because then if you will yeah. secure the win that will be like a big jump right away and and so yeah it was really exactly. great to see you do that i'm, I'm not i'm not here to to mess around I, i'm here right. to to get into to um, to getting top 10 ranked and then almost towards the title and uh, the the better opponent i get the the faster i get there yeah um, yeah I I am 35. I don't feel like I'm in a rush per se, but sure. At the same time, you know, it's not like I'm at a point in my career where it would be a smart move to to kind of pick and choose uh, different fights uh, just to to gain experience. Yeah, right. I got the experience, and now it's it's about getting getting towards the top as fast as possible. Yeah. There is a. One moment, and that's the only technical question I want to ask about the fight, but just I just really remember that moment. Uh, uh, there was this kind of peculiar moment. I actually even can't remember. I think you were on, in the top position in a uh, grappling situation with him. And mm -hmm. there was this kind of a, almost like a controversial stand-up where the referee decided to stand you both up. And I was watching... Yeah. Yeah, and I just just a quick one thing. I looked at your body language, and I liked a lot because it seemed like in your face there was this this that's strange, but well, it is what it is, and you just continued. Yeah. So I wonder if, if I got that right. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised as well because Oliveira was on top of me, and like right. it wasn't like it's not like any of us was stalling. I was probably waiting a bit for him to move so I could get an opening. Sure. But but I felt he was moving, so that's why I was surprised that the, yeah. that the referee stepped in and 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 um, and stood us up. Uh, which was like when I look at the fight as well, I, I feel that wasn't that was that wasn't supposed to happen. But mm. referees are just human, humans as well, and they make right. mistakes sometimes. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, then they learn from it as well. But but yeah, I was I was surprised as well. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna get up anyway. Um, and and it was good for me and my result that it happened when it did, because hmm. uh, the clock was going down. But uh, right. but yeah, surprising. Yeah, because I also think to compensate that there was another decision he made, which was against your favor, if I remember well. And then that yeah, was, there was a, like there was a situation. I think it was in the first round where I can't remember if I got a takedown. Either way, he he was he ended up on his back, Oliveira. Right. And I was kind of trying to get back past his guard and, and land some ground pound or secure position where he hit me with, with an up kick uh, to the face while I had, you know, while I was technically grounded. Um, where he, re there was only 10 seconds left and he, he should have restarted us from the same position, but he restarted us uh, standing apart yeah. instead, which was to me, like in, in the moment, I didn't think about it for a second. Uh, yeah. Looking back at it, yeah, that that was a mistake as well, but but like it didn't really affect the fight. Yeah, uh, and maybe that was what the referee had in the back of his head in the third round. Like, some way subconsciously, he felt like he needed to to you know kind of yeah, that, that's what compensate. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, well, yeah, one way or another, yeah, a win was a win, and and as I said, I enjoyed seeing like you 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 didn't seem bothered about that at all. You were just like, okay, let's get back to the fight, whatever. So that was that was lovely. Absolutely, that that was the mindset I was in. Like, if, I guess anyway, also for the Ross Houston fight, where you know, a lot of there was a lot of like pauses in the fight because of all the blood and all that. Yeah. You know, I and I never lost focus. I was just like, yeah, whatever, like. I'm fighting until I'm told not to fight. Yeah. And yeah. even in that fight, when when Mark got it, he was like, when he stopped it, I was like, okay, it's 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 over. It stopped. And then and then he actually came to me. Do you want to hear why I stopped the fight? I was like, oh oh yeah, that would be that would be nice to hear. But <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't uh, 
have any issue with with it uh, and i guess that's just the way i i get in fights i'm so focused so i just yeah. listen to the referee and like and that's the way it is in the cage his his word is the law so you just follow it yeah yeah and i think that that's the last thing i, I just wanted to reflect about the fight something something you said that kind of being in the zone or being in the flow uh, it's really great to hear that and it makes sense. And there's there's one talk I had while I was in Dublin uh, and it's Bajid with Makwan Amrikani. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he beforehand, that was topped afterwards, but beforehand I think he had the fastest knockout in UFC and he, he got a knee into someone's head like in the first few seconds. And, and I asked him about that. I yeah, was like, I think it was so, six or eight seconds or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like, it was really fast, yeah. And then yeah. I asked him, so, so, you know, can you tell me about that? And he very specifically said he was really like in a, in a good mood and in the flow, very confident that yeah. day. And it just kind of gave me that hint that that's like a big part of being good in that game is kind of being in that, that good state. And so it's really good to hear that, that you're, you're in yeah. that state. So, yeah, yeah, I've worked a lot with my psychotherapist, um, um in general and, and specifically for competing um, yeah. about how I, how I get to that point and, mm. and the, the tools I, I'd gotten work really well in Copenhagen and, and they will this time around this, again. Um, and I'm really happy to have those tools because it, it makes it like, I guess beforehand it was kind of random for some fights. I, I managed to find that focus and mind space or mindset. Yeah. And then sometimes I just like I was going into the fight and I wanted to fight, but I didn't quite have the same, like I wasn't quite in the same mind space. Uh, yeah. and now I've gotten tools to, to kind of adjust. If, if I'm too tense, I can, I can have tools to relax. If I'm too relaxed, I, I can kind of have some tools to tense up again and, right. and find that perfect, uh, perfect spot physically and mentally. Nice. Yeah, I just can't stop myself from from reflecting about that quickly as well. There's uh, there's something similar I thought a lot about in in my own explorations. Not not that much about fighting because fighting, you know, it's I'm still very 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 much new to fighting, but it applies to everything. I think uh, I I was reflecting about some cases where there's let's say like a, the best song ever, not not say ever, but like the best song, top song, made by a band, mm-hmm. and they never make anything again. Or somebody creates a great yeah. movie. And the rest movies are, are bad. And I remember it was Steve Jobs who explained that phenomena. And I like that explanation a lot. He said, that's, that's when the person who achieved that success doesn't, didn't really know how he achieved that success. And that the person yeah. who is able to achieve success again and again, it's the person who knows, who understands the tools, how he gets there. And he's able to repeat that. So, so it seems, sounds great that you, you, you're, you became so familiar with yourself that you're kind of consciously accessing that versus, oh, I don't know whether this is going to work or not today. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess sometimes, like, if a musician ha- have a hit, they, they didn't really, like, mean to, if that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't their goal from the beginning. And then, yeah, I guess when, when you kind of blow up and, and get big on TV or social media or whatever, yeah. it, it can also be hard for a person to to stay calm in all that hype and, yeah. and not, you know, get too overconfident or, yeah. or kind of lose focus because uh, there's going to be a lot of distractions and a lot of people telling you, oh, you're amazing. And then like it, it's happened from, for myself as well. Like, you kind of lose focus and, and yeah. rest on your laurels for a bit yeah, 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 and, yeah. instead of, it's 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 a fine line i guess being able to to take appreciation and praise from other people but still being humble and don't let it affect your your hunger and mindset too much it's it's for some people it's easy and for some people it's, it's difficult um, yeah. and for some people it's it's somewhere in between right <laughs> um, but, yeah, but i, I think it. that can yeah. affect that can affect a lot of people that get a lot of popularity fast as well like a lot of people just basically sucking your ass and yeah, you know yeah, wanting yeah, yeah. to do everything for you that and it makes sense like if if everybody's you know bowing for in front of you and wanting to do all kinds of stuff for you how how couldn't that change you if if you don't if you're not aware about it and and yeah. thinking uh, consciously about how to 
not fall into that that pit. Yeah, one hundred percent. Cool. So of of course, fame changes people. Uh, yeah. Of course, it does because it it's like it's not a class you have in school. <laughs> yeah. How to handle that and 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 it is right. difficult to handle for some people. Uh, True. Yeah. You know, when you when you say about that, it reminds me also of those cases where uh, young kids get famous, like let's say in Hollywood, and usually yeah. like their life is a mess. Like later on, it's always like not necessarily a rule, but it, there's a huge tendency. And I think it's the same what you just mentioned. Nobody really teaches us how to handle that that success and what to do with it. So yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it can be difficult for some people. Some people are just naturally good at handling it, or some people have the right people around them and who can help them with it. Because every situation is unique as well, right? When you, when you get famous, it's like it's it's not like there's necessarily someone who are exactly like you that got famous for exactly the same thing and are exactly in the same business. Uh, um, so yeah. No, but that's yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm happy it's, it's, about. It's you. it's. Uh, it's it's a you know it's a big uh, not subject but like it's it's a it's a chaotic uh, environment I, I guess I can say uh, getting famous and, and trying to find your way and all that right. not that I'm super famous but you know I've I, I have yeah. learned a lot I have learned you know something from from being like let's say approached one time a day and people asking for a photo and and sure where my boundaries are and and what I want to say yes to and what I want to say no to uh, like leading up to this fight it seems like <laughs> like every every man and, and their dog has a podcast now <laughs> and they want to do <laughs> uh, an interview and uh, and you know and, and yeah. I appreciate the attention uh, like internally I, I get kind of like because I get all the requests, so I'm I'm the one receiving it. It's kind of like I wouldn't say annoying, but it's like, come on, man, you like, you got 300 followers. That's what I'm <laughs> thinking in my head. Like, sure. I I don't have the the resources, time wise or mentally, to to take on your podcast, uh, Joe. Because yeah. like, sorry, but but like, you're not like my top priority pick. Sure. Uh, um. And and that's the thing as well, right? Handling, being able to handle all those like requests for attention mm-hmm. without taking it personally, because in a way, it they, I'm presuming they want to talk to me because I'm me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I see where you're but, going. But, yeah. but at the same time, I think a lot of them they're just like they oh, sent yeah. the same message for to probably sixty other fighters. Right. Um, so it's about balancing that like you want a piece of me but then i guess the reason i'm not really saying yes to a lot of them is because it doesn't seem like they've specifically like it just seems like a message they sent to to 60 other fighters and that's something they sent to me specifically because they want me on it and i'm truly interested in in what i do so i kind of try and sort that out but but it's it's i think what i'm getting to is it's it's interesting and and in a way to handle that and not take it too personally because yeah. you know, in the long run it's just positive that someone even if I was just on a list of 60 fighters I was okay. on that list so right. it, yeah. I gotta appreciate that as well and then for me that's that's a, you know that's an ongoing uh, journey to, to to handle that the best possible way yeah yeah I'm, I'm 100% with you and uh, uh again our, our lifestyles are different and and the things we do are different but but there's always parallels and and i went and keep on going through a similar process too because there's because of my channel there are people who invite me to their podcast but as you mentioned like a lot of them are just like you know brand new and 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 they just like i guess they go some of them just want that because of because you have a certain number of followers versus like you said who you are and uh, and also i have that similar con- consideration that i have a limit of time of energy and i can invest in it the same energy i can invest into things which will create a big payout not like financially yeah, necessarily yeah. but like emotionally and and, and in, in other ways and and there were yeah. some podcasts where I, I agreed to go on and then i ended up being 
like it wasn't like even like so much about me about as, as much as the person who's doing the podcast expressing his opinion i was like why am i even here <laughs> you know yeah yeah, so, yeah exactly oh yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah that's yeah I, it's the same experience here right i, I want to give back to the community and i think it's nice that, that so many people are getting are doing podcasts but like if i should do every request i get it would just like i would I could do this for I could do that for the next like three days. Right. Yeah. And, and so not it's it's also about it. Yeah, it's about picking and choosing, right? You wanna give back of course it's nice to give back to someone who has like three hundred followers as well. If there's a like a super fan, fourteen year old super fan living in right. Mexico or whatever, that would sure. be that would make his week to, to do a podcast with him. I wanna do that. But it's I get I guess the amount of requests I've gotten for this fight at least. It's just been very big, so it's like yeah. overwhelming, and like <laughs> that's why I get to the place where I'm like feeling overloaded and being like 300 followers. Sorry, man, but you sure. know, and you didn't really seem specifically <laughs> interested in me and in in, in, right. in like the request. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really not trying to to seem unreachable or or negative sure. in any way, but I'm just really trying to to manage that. You know, as you said, balance right. You wanna give back to someone who's just starting out because we everyone was there at one point and got some help from someone i want to give that back to others sure but i also need to think of myself and like it would be better for me to be on ariel hilwani's podcast that that would give me more Um, but again for hilwani he's taking a step down in a way to have me on his podcast right so it's it's like this cycle where you gotta you gotta give and you gotta take and yeah sure just trying to find the balance of that. percent. <laughs> well, I uh, already it's it, that's the funny part, you know. When when we talk, we talk, and I see like we could already we could just go deep, dig deeper there. But <laughs> but I want to make sure yeah. I ask you at least a few more questions. And uh, so just to cover that, uh, the the time after your fight was crazy with COVID and everything. So maybe a few words. How how did that go through for you? Like having the fight and camp and the fights canceled and training during COVID, like all of that, what, what stood out for you? Um, I guess in a way, um, I'm always trying to see the positive in things and I feel more hungry and mentally ready for a fight now than I was actually feeling a week before the, the, the co-main event in London I was supposed to have. I don't know why. I get, maybe it was because all of February, like, was completely shit weather in Copenhagen. <laughs> so I think somehow mentally that was just it was just so draining, like gray skies, basically every day and stuff like that. But like, I, w- I was kind of relieved that the fight didn't happen. Maybe it was also all the stress right before it got canceled. Like, are we on? Are we not on? Are we getting compensated? Are we not getting compensated? And then I was asked to to have my fight on Cage Warriors, perhaps instead, if my opponent said yes as well. And like hmm. it was just a lot of stressful, last minute, possible potential changes yeah. um, that were that were kind of overwhelming. Um, right. Of course, I would have been ready for the fight and, and gone there and weight was on point and all that. But I I, I feel more hungry now, and maybe that's because I up until the Oliveira fight including that fight you know I, I, that was my sixth or seventh fight in in just over a year um, yeah. so I've been very busy and then I had all this then I've had all the like it's been 10 months now since the last time I fight so I guess yeah. I'm just really itching to get back in the cage very nice so uh, so but training during COVID was you know it was just weird times like the, the, the martial arts gym was closed of course and yeah but I had a, a super nice uh, follower who who loaned me his his rowing machine because mm. he, he saw me on Instagram stories like starting to to go on runs and and he followed me so much that he he knew that wasn't something I normally did so he was like don't you want to borrow my rower until the the gym's open I was like mm. heck yeah nice. uh, and then my one of my sponsors they they supplied me with a lot of home training equipment which was mm. super nice as well. Right. So you know, all in all, keeping the training going through the Corona uh, lockdown was was fairly good. And then 
not too long after the lockdown in Denmark happened, they opened up. So professionals were allowed to train, mm. which meant that I could at least get back to some training in, in, in the gym yeah. with all the other pros uh, that are at, uh, at Rumble Sports. And, um, and yeah, then I got asked to fight on Fight Island and I was just like, it was on, I guess, seven, six or seven weeks notice. And I was, you know, weight wasn't, it wasn't optimal, <laughs> but yeah. still, I was like, "Fuck yeah, of course, fine, yeah, yeah. let's do it." So I was actually set for uh, July 11th for the first event, but mm. I was like, "You know, I, I would make it. I had the energy. I had the <laughs> me and my team. We were like, yeah, big dig energy. <laughs> that was like the, the mantra we had. We we had the big dig energy, but uh, but it would be better to have two weeks more. Sure. So." I asked to get it pushed back two weeks and and Smart, yeah. um, uh, and thanks to UFC for for doing that um, at Roberts of course uh, then he ended up dropping out but like when when he dropped out then as well I was like fuck it I don't care if they give me Robbie Lawler or Kamau <laughs> Usman whatever I just want to go <laughs> and fight yeah. I just want to go and fight I don't care give me anyone so uh, so um, I've I've been I felt, I appreciate that I've felt that way because that has given me a lot of, uh, yeah, nice energy for this training camp. Very cool. What did you first think when you heard about Fight Island? Because I guess what went through most people's head was, what is this? Are we living in a movie or something? And then eventually <laughs> you, you get there. So how, how was that for you? Well, I was like, exactly like you. I felt like it was a page or a scene taken right out of um, Ends of the Dragon with the, with Bruce right. Lee. Yeah, <laughs> that was like my that was like my association when I heard it. It's a good one. I was yeah. like, like I I guess in a way, for a couple of weeks, I thought UFC was kind of pushing it in in regards to the to the virus, mm. and like, could they make could they do it in a safe enough way? Yeah, because they they did seem a bit brash about trying to to stay ha keep having events. Right. Um, but then then once they started actually doing it, and and I saw how much went into trying to secure uh, as a virus free environment as possible, you know, it kind of made sense to me. And the experience by by coming here has been on that regard pretty good as well. Like we got tested in London, got put in isolation for forty eight hours. Yeah. Negative test. We get flown to Abu Dhabi, and straight away when we arrive, we get tested mm -hmm. again and put in, put in isolation. Uh, and then after a total of ninety six hours of isolation, and we had one test done the day after as well. Uh, again, so I feel that they're really trying to do their best to to you know yeah. make sure they they can do it in a safe way, um, which is nice. And uh, yeah, being here is is awesome. Like. It's luxury. <laughs> and again, yeah, first time I've tried flying business class. First time I tried actually lying down while flying on something that resembles a bed, which was a nice experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The turbulence yeah. was al almost kind of like lolling Fun. into sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I also, when I looked at your stories, and I was curious to ask, uh, I saw you today, you, you finally had the chance to leave your room. And I saw you were walking in the hotel and there were these red lines. Am I just delusional and are they just like a part of the interior or are they lines to keep distance from other people? No, it's just a carpet. Okay, good. I was like, oh my God, they're I, taking like extreme measures. <laughs> I know, I, I, can, I can show you. It's, it's okay. just like a carpet thing. So, I was like, I was like, I had to ask. I was like, oh, okay. No, yeah, see this. It almost felt like, so, oh, it's, they're it's, like really careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't think they switched out all the carpets for the entire hotel just because of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I guess in a way the carpets are like divided into to lanes. Hmm. So, sure. So, without without them being aware of it, they they could kind of function as as guides to where sure. you should yeah, walk yeah, in yeah. what direction. <laughs> um, and also too, uh, it's it's also hard not to ask. So how is, and I guess you are allowed to speak about that. Uh, how is Fight Island? Like, like how different it is from what you expected, or did, is it like exactly what you expected? It's it's obviously not Enter the Dragon, right? No, 
it's <laughs> it's it's I, I guess I expected more uh, a more tropical climate, not a desert uh-huh. climate, because of you know, again because I think my reference was a Bruce Lee movie where it's a, it's a more uh, uh, luscious like island with with a lot of trees and green, where like we're basically in the middle of of a desert here. Right. on a man-made island so so it's a bit of a more barren climate um and and i i i guess it makes sense f- for the fights but i was a bit disappointed that the fight <laughs> wasn't gonna take place in the actual cage at the beach right uh, yeah yeah yeah. i know that's what i guess everybody <laughs> thought and- I, I i felt that was really like advertised that it was gonna be in that cage on the beach Ah, uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess as well. That, that's what I had the impression too. So, so I, I, since the arena is empty, I wish they could have made the arena look like at least look like it was outside. Maybe print like a, I don't know what the <laughs> circumference of the arena is, but like I've been to a a award award event in in Copenhagen in Royal Arena where I fought, which is like a sixteen thousand people arena, and they made a banner that covered the entire outside of, of the, the floor area. Mm. So it looked like you were in a forest. So like at least like print out a banner with palm <laughs> trees, like a huge, I don't know, 60 meter banner, put it up since you don't have any people in, in, in the stands anyway, you could do that. And like put out sand on the floor. There's no spectators anyway. And like put up right. some palms inside of the arena. <laughs> that would at least make it look like you were somewhere, you know, uh, exotic. Right. Instead of making it look like basically an event from Milwaukee, USA, or sure. J- Japan, or whatever, right? Yeah. So, so I, I see some, and maybe for the ring girls, you know, have coconuts instead of bikinis and hula <laughs> skirts, and <laughs> just yeah. go full full retard. It would have been fun. I, I'm with you 100. percent I think that that was what was on everybody's mind when the promotions were like that and everyone's like oh this is going to be like definitely like a movie like i don't know like moral combat in the sand yeah. <laughs> fighting but yeah. it is what it is it it's could still, have been it's, it could right. have been cool with with some more with some visual aspects on the broadcast right. that kind of told you okay this is fight island right yeah yeah, yeah. uh but uh, well, actually, but, but yeah. no matter what i'm just super happy that you know it's 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 crazy that ufc is putting so much effort into doing this Right. So all in all, I just appreciate that I've, you know, that I have the opportunity and all the other fighters have the opportunity to go here and fight. Absolutely. Um, So that's nice. Yeah. And it's still, I'll add as well, it's still an epic story. Like still, you are still on Fight Island. You still flew there and the whole thing is just about the fight. So it's it's still like... Yeah, there's no, there's no commercial fights going into, into Abu Dhabi or... uh, yeah, so so like they chartered a private plane, a lot of private. They they hired one from yeah. from an airline, right? But like, there's no commercial flight, so they're they're going to great lengths to to give us the opportunity to fight and mm. and doing it. Like, it's not the setup. Uh, it's not the the picture I had in my head, the mm-hmm. actual setup. But it's it's still nice. Yeah, I I can't complain. Yeah. Last technical question about Fight Island, and more, I'll leave it more alone, <laughs> more or less. Uh, how big is it? Are you going to show me a bit? <laughs> oh, our room or what? No, yeah, outside of the balcony, I guess. <laughs> I saw it actually well, on stories, but whoever is watching, it, maybe they're curious to see. Well, okay, we can, we can take a small tour. <laughs> yeah, sure. If that's so a this, is, this is the door I wasn't allowed to open for uh, 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we were allowed to open. We could order room service and stuff like that. But uh, okay. yeah, it's it's basically just a nice hotel room. Right. So uh, and then we got the coach mats over there. Oh, hello, oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he can't hear you. Okay. And of course, the Danish flag. And if you look closely, you can see uh, all the blood stains from the Rush Houston fight. Nice. <laughs> of like course, you, I would never wash that. <laughs> it's then, like Michael Jordan not washing his shorts. And, yeah, and then the, the lens might fuck up because it's super hot outside compared okay. to the inside. Uh, but yeah, Ina and a part of the F1 circuit. I right. Don't know if you can see it on the. So, uh, sun sets pretty early here, or already around seven. I guess that's the way it is when you're getting close to the equator. 
Right. Um, but it's the the rooms are very nice. Can't complain. Nice. And the hotel is huge as well. Nice. And this very very last part. So how big is the island? Is it like tiny or is it actually an actual island? It's an actual island, and I think it's man-made. Uh, I haven't okay. been around the entire island yet. I don't think I I will have the time actually. I just the only thing I've I've managed to to get around to today anyway was just to go to that that beach cage and uh, mm. get some some pictures and just check it out. Um, like yeah, how big is it? Check on Google Maps. <laughs> that That's what be, I yeah. thought. You know, I was I was juggling. Should yeah. I ask you or should I just check on Google? No, 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 no it's fine. But I, I literally have no sense. Like it sure. wasn't until eight hours ago ish that I got out of the hotel and jumped on a bus to go to that cage. So nice. I haven't really had the opportunity to explore yet. Mm. But uh, it's always it's always weird when you travel for fights because like you're not always, but usually you're like in a, in a new city or place. And I always say to people, yeah, I, I, I go there, but I don't experience it because sure. I'm, I'm there to do a job. So yeah. like now I'm starting to, to have to drink a lot of water for the water loading for the weight cut. Yeah. And tomorrow I'm really starting to cut out all my carbs, all the carbs on my diet. And, and so, you know, then I kind of go into already now i'm into work mode so it's it's kind of limited what resources i have and and will use on and will want to use on on going around or you know checking out the island which yeah. is kind of a bummer but that like my first year sea fight in, in brazil it was the same thing like yeah. i saw a hotel i saw a shopping mall and i saw an <laughs> arena that, that that was it i was in brazil for a week yeah but that's just the way it is, right? Um, so traveling for fights is is cool, but it's not as exotic or interesting a, a, as you might think. Because yeah. usually you're busy, yeah, preparing for weight cuts or stuff like that, and doing media interviews, whatever. Yeah. No, it makes absolute sense, and I think that's that shows like a good sign of a professional like a professional person because you're there to do your, as you said, your job and you're yeah. all tuned in. So I think just it's yeah. a mis misconception that people have. They're like, Oh, being a fighter, that's probably a very fun life. You just fight once in a while and you travel. And it's like, yeah. not really. Well, I, I guess some fighters are good at like, they, they don't need the same, what can you say? Focus. So mm. they, they have more, what choose to, to, to spend more time on and energy on, on exploring a bit. But yeah. for me, I, uh, it works best for me just to kind of stay in that, that narrow fo mindset and focus and, and like, yeah, I could maybe go and do some jet ski at some beach, but I don't really want to spend the energy on finding sure. out where it is. Cause like, then I'd rather, stay close to my room because I have to pee all the time because I'm drinking <laughs> 10 liters of water, 10 liters of water a day. Right. So yeah. then it kind of becomes a problem. What if I go and I need to pee and like, where's the nearest toilet? And like, it's just easy for me uh, to just kind of stay in that mindset. And it makes the trip maybe a bit less, uh, a bit, a bit less exciting, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to work. I'm not here to explore. And, uh, and that's, you know, if, if I do my job well enough, I'm going to earn enough money to then afterwards <laughs> travel. Like that, that's the way I see it. Yeah. Instead, instead of letting my energy go to something that's not super productive. Nice. But saying that though, we are living on a racetrack and I just found out today that for like 35 pounds, you can get two laps in a race car on the track. So I'm, definitely gonna do that tomorrow okay that that sounds like you uh, energy that you can invest <laughs> yeah but the racetrack is right there so yeah. like that that's you know that's manageable in another way than having to go halfway across an island to do something the toilet is close enough right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> nice. well i i realize you you you'll probably your training is is due uh so shall yeah, we i have to i have, to, I have 10 15 minutes more. Okay, cool. I have like questions. just a couple more questions. I mean, as I said, okay, no I, I could talk, you know, 
with you for hours, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's what we did the last time. Almost. I know <laughs> at, the co- at the coffee shop. I know, you know, I know. we did I, the I interview kept... and then then we ended up in a coffee shop and ended up talking until they closed. Basically. I remember, I remember. Uh, it was like I, I I kept thinking like, am I keeping him like, or is this, or, or are we both are like cool? So I realized that we're both cool, but yeah. but for me, I was yeah. like, huh, I like that, but just want to make sure you know we're all good. So anyway um so yeah we're the just a couple more things uh so one is um not a big question but i'm I'm curious again about your perspective uh the fighting without an audience uh what are your thoughts about that i am looking forward to it Mm. um i love fighting with an audience but the i haven't tried it yet fighting without but from what i've seen and what i what i like the idea i have in my head I feel it's it's very pure in a way. There's no like distractions. There's no show. It's just about the fight. You can hear every sound. You can hear every word from the corner. Like to me, it just makes it more intense in 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 a different way, but in a cool way for me. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm not wishing that every event from now on should be like in empty arenas. I, I love hearing like that roar from the from the crowd and, and being at events like just as a fan it's it's exciting mm. but like I'm definitely not turned off by the idea that there's no uh, spectators on the mm. contrary I kind of maybe leads me back to my karate days where when you were mm. competing like it was basically just a silent uh, not an arena, but like where we had those competitions in gymnastics halls or whatever. Like, it, it it makes it pure in a way. Yeah. Almost kind of like the old Japanese MMA events as well, where mm. like you could hear a needle drop, and then somebody <laughs> made a guard pass, and then of course you could hear the crowd; they were clapping. But like it was it was very silent and very pure and, and very focused in in another way than than you get when you have a like a twenty thousand people crowd. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that a lot. Nice. Yeah, I really like that you're saying. And now that you said it, uh, I, I even as a spectator, you know, I'm watching it, obviously, the fights on my laptop or, or TV, but but still you can hear like every coach's word and every sound, every movement. It, it does make it kind of more intense. So I can only imagine how it is from the inside, but but there's definitely a very different quality to it. So, yeah. uh, Like for me, I'm always pretty focused when I'm fighting. Of course, mm. like when I was fighting the last time in, in Royal Arena in Copenhagen, mm. like the crowd was so loud that I couldn't hear my corner. <laughs> but 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 I do think anyway, for me, it's not going to make the biggest of difference because no. like I've never been one to really notice the crowd anyway. Mm-hmm. Like I sense them, but I don't yeah. like, it's not something that, that affects me yeah. really. So so for me, I think it's it's not a negative thing at all it's just going to be even make me perhaps even more focused and and more on point because there's there's no distractions which means i can just kind of focus even more on on the task at hand very cool and you mentioned your weight uh weight management or weight cut uh you said that Mm -hmm. when the initial invitation was for the fight you weren't necessarily on point so you, you apparently you gave yourself enough time, but having you know all that in mind. So how how is it right now? How are you doing? It's it's perfect. Like yes. I was at eighty six kilos this morning, and uh, since the last fight in September, I, with my physical trainer, we uh, and the coaching staff or crew, uh, we we kind of talked a bit, and and my cardio is so big that we thought it it would be a positive to put on a couple of kilos of, of lean muscle mass. Mm. So we've done that. So it's the first time I'm cutting down from, well, I've cut down from a higher weight, but not the same body composition. So, mm. so I got some more muscle mass and, and before the London fight, I was stressing about it a bit, but, but it's, it's looking really good if I'm just trusting the numbers and not what I'm used to, because like I'm a kilo heavier than usually at this point. And I'm like, uh, stressing about it, but with all the knowledge I have, not the yeah. experience, but knowledge, yeah. it, it, it's going to work out perfect. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I'm trusting, you know, the process. Uh, 
uh, but yeah, it's I, hopefully it's going to make uh, a positive difference in the cage as well. Um, well, it is. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 as fast as before, but I'm yeah I have maybe one and a half kilo more muscle mass, so nice. so that should result in and especially this fight where I'm facing a a, a guy who's stepping up from lightweight, you know that that should mm. give me uh, a strength and power advantage. Nice. What it will nice. be, it will, it will do. Mm, very smart. I so, love that. so that's that's been interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. But and, yeah, uh, I was at yeah. I was at ninety three kilos, I think, when I got the offer oh. for the fight. So I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> okay, let's but, go." I mean, you know, as, at least as far as I see in the videos, you always look badass. So. <laughs> so well, I guess, yeah, well, I, I, it always takes some time for me to adjust. I've I've gotten better and better and better at it, and that was actually a, a good lesson I learned from all this Corona stuff. Like I recognized mm-hmm. that. If I'm not consciously, consciously like aware of it, it it takes me like three weeks to to kind of get in a new rhythm or routine. Um, if I'm aware of it, I, I can do it way faster. I'm doing that traveling here and adjusting my day. Uh, mm. But like it, it was a nice lesson to learn that you know, just stay uh, learn to stay a bit more aware of of what I'm doing than before so that was yeah, a good lesson mm. and uh, just a couple last things so one is the prep um for the fight uh, we're already it is on record i'm not sure you know we, we it was kind of a warm-up talk you mentioned this the the whole training at night regime and and just like in general what what are your plans for preparing for the fight it's until sunday so how are you planning to base it all well now i'm having you know i'm I'm trying to do my my main training at at around 3 a.m where i'm supposed to fight mm. maybe we should push it back to and that's local time so that's going to be 1 a.m uh european time yeah. uh, maybe push it back half an hour because then that's where we start warming up for the fight and something like that but but try and make my my main training happen there so you know, my body clock is just getting more and more used to it. And like yesterday where we had like, or was it the day before where we had like the first session at that time, you know, I, I kind of felt a bit sluggish and, and off, mm. but mm. I'm, I'm, and I was, you know, I could have chosen to not do it, but then I was like, okay, even if I don't get the best session in, mm. it's still uh, one step closer towards, you know, full adjustment. So yeah. it's just about, staying in there and okay maybe the first session wasn't the best but then the the following ones are going to get better um because i i i, I did that thanks so yeah we and just decided to, to try and adjust immediately instead mm-hmm. of kind of half assing it and then you know taking it step by step we just did cold turkey and like adjust mm-hmm. <laughs> And how many days are you still training? Uh, is there a day where you stop and just let the body rest? Well, basically, no, actually. I want to mm. maybe, well, maybe on Thursday, because then I'm going to be be starting the weight cut. But even on that day, I might, like, then my training is going to be a long walk throughout the day at some mm. point during the day. Um, so, yeah, maybe Thursday. I'm not going to do any, like, specific training, but it's Monday to, oh, well, Tuesday, I guess, but for me, it's Monday mm-hmm. night. Um, yeah. Still training there, still training Tuesday night, still training Wednesday night, and then, mm-hmm. yeah, Thursday night is going to be the weight cutting, uh, or a bit a, a part of it, and then Friday, yeah, I guess afternoon for you guys, but morning for me, it's, it's going to be the last part of the weight cut. And then even after that, a couple, like, three or four hours after I'm, I've done the weigh-ins, I want to go hit pads for a bit just to, you know, get, get the body moving and, and kind of remind it what, 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 what we need to do on Saturday. Nice. And a few words about your opponent so people would know who you're fighting. I'm uh, fighting Jesse Ronson. He's a, uh, he's a late replacement replacement fighter. Uh, he's fighting. Uh, I think he's from, uh, he's from Canada. I'm not thinking mm. he is. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, and luckily for me, he's also a South Pole which my mm. previous opponent was as well. Uh, mm. So so he's got a different style, but like a lot of the, it wasn't a total readjustment. It was more a smaller adjustment 
because he's doing things a bit differently. But like, it was better to get a guy like this than say like uh, a guy with an orthodox foot stance and like some crazy uh, Dagestani wrestle type, right? Where yeah. this guy, he's he's more down the same alley as my previous opponent. It wasn't like a total of 180 um, cool. in, in styles. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. He's moving up from lightweight. Uh, mm. and like I think actually his 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 hat like he was in UFC back in 2014. And he actually went to a split decision with uh, Trinaldo, who's fighting on Saturday as well, and Kevin mm. Lee. Um, so you know he 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 can hang in there. Um, uh, but like his, his his record after he got released from UFC has been kind of he's been winning most fights, but but it's it's. And him taking the fight on late notice definitely shows that that he's he's coming to grab an opportunity and to fight like he he yeah. wants to to do this uh like not not to praise myself too much but i i don't think I'm the easiest yeah, uh, sure. comeback comeback fight to to get so uh mm-hmm. so i'm I'm expecting him to be really resilient and and really try and, and you know take take the victory and and grind it out uh, so i'm i'm ready for that but uh i'm uh i have some uh, things up my sleeve as up my sleeve as well so uh, bet, i'm, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm very, very cool. excited for uh, saturday yeah me too me too yeah and uh that that will end my questions for this time <laughs> and but i just wanted to Perfect. wrap up and say Again, I'm, I, I guess I just got so invested in your story, you know, I'm just like excited <laughs> about it. And I don't, you know, Thank I you. don't, uh, it, it, you know, it just happened. And uh, it's, you know, I, I watch UFC here and there, and, this, and the, there's this fighter and that fighter that I watch, but I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh man, you know. <laughs> I fighting. appreciate that. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure Thank to you. follow your journey. And uh, we'll be really happy, 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 to, happy, happy to know that my, my journey and, and what I've shared of it is, is inspiring or, yeah. You know, just making people feel better or do something. Absolutely, it does. So, so yeah, and that's that's I think what matters a lot. So, so this is awesome. 